Hello everyone and welcome back to this brand new video. In this lesson we are going to talk about how to create the sliding door in Unity. Uh, so what we are going to create in this lesson is the automatic sliding door. So let's go to the scripts folder. Let's create a brand new C Sharp script uh, which is going to be called a sliding door. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do inside of this class is, uh, first of all, let's delete both of these methods and uh, let's implement a new public enum, which is going to be called something like sliding a door state. So there are going to be only uh, three states, uh, none, then open and close. So now let's implement a brand new header, which is going to be references. And let's add a brand new reference. This is going to be a transform and uh, we need a reference to our right door. So let's say right door. We also need a reference to our left door. So let's grab that reference as well. All right. So after we implemented these references, we need to implement a couple of settings. So let's create a brand new header, which is going to be settings. And the first uh, option that we need to implement is going to be uh, the layer mask. And uh, this layer mask is uh, going to be called something like layers to detect. Uh, so we will need to determine what kind of layers this door will going to detect. The next uh, thing that we need to implement is going to be the speed on how fast the door is going to open and close. So let's implement a brand new range attribute and let's say that the range is going to go between 1 and 10. Uh, so let's implement a brand new serialized field which is going to be a float. Uh, the next thing that we need to implement is going to be uh, the open delay as well as the close delay. So let's add a brand new range attribute which will go between for example 0.5 and in 4 seconds. So this is going to be a float and let's call it delay. So now the next thing that we need to implement is going to be the serialized field which is going to be the default x position and then we're gonna have another float which is going to be a open x position and we can actually call this instead of default a close x position so after we implemented these two float values we need to then grab the reference to the audio tracks so let's create a brand new header which is going to be called audio so this is going to be an audio clip uh, and this audio clip is going to be used and then we're going to open the door. So this is going to be an open sound effect. And of course we need to grab a reference to our audio clip which we will use whenever we are going to close uh, the door. The next thing that we need to implement is going to be, well first of all let's add a region and let's call this something like private. So the first value private value that we need to implement is going to be the private boolean and let's call this something like animating so we will need to determine if the door is currently animating so either opening or closing and then the next thing that we need to implement is going to be the sliding door state and this is going to be the animating state so now the next thing that we need to implement is going to be uh, the private sliding door state and this is going to be uh, the current state. So for example, if uh, our door is currently closing and when we enter the trigger, uh, then the state is going to be open. But uh, we will only going to open the state once the door is uh, finished animating. So we need to cache in the current state of the door. So let's call it something like state and this is going to be the current uh, state of this uh, door. And then the next thing that we need to implement is going to be the private list and this is going to be the list of transform and we can call this something like in range uh, so this is going to be the list where we're going to store all of the in range uh, objects so we need to keep track of all of the objects that are currently uh, in range so now the last thing that we need to implement is going to be the private audio source so we can call this something like a source and let's implement a public audio source which is going to be the getter so first of all we need to check if the source is equals to null if source is equals to null we need to try to get the audio source from this object if after we try to get this audio source from this object if the source 
is still equals to null so we need to check that if it's still equals to null even though we try to get the component then it means that this component is not found on this game object so we need to say that we need to add the component onto this game object so let's say game object dot add component audio source and this is the component that we're going to add and afterwards after we done all of the checking we are going to return uh, the audio source uh, so actually the very last thing that we need to implement is going to be the enuminator so let's simply say that this is going to be the enuminator I start animating then we need another enuminator for the animate so let's simply say enuminator animate uh, then what we need to do is we need to implement uh, the enuminator which is going to be the uh, enuminator uh, open door and these are all of the enuminators uh, that we're going to need so the first method that we need to implement is going to be the private uh, void which is going to be the start method and let's say that the close exposition is going to be equals to math dot abc and uh, what we need to put is going to be for example left door dot transform dot position uh, dot x so math dot abc will assure that the value is always going to be positive so now the next thing that we need to do is we need to implement a couple of on trigger methods so the first method that we need to implement is going to be the private void on trigger enter and also we need private void on trigger uh, exit so first of all we need to determine the layer of this new collider that entered the trigger if uh, one and then we need to use this operator and let's say if other dot uh, game object dot layer mask is equals to the layers to detect all right so this will check if the other layer matches uh, the layer that we put inside of the layers to detect a layer mask uh, then what we need to do is we need to say that in range we need to add this object as the object that is currently in range uh, that what we need to do is we need to say that the state which is the current state needs to be equals to the sliding door state dot open and then what we need to do is we need to start animating of course we do not have this method at the moment but we were going to implement this in just a second let's now go and let's implement uh, this on trigger exit method let's copy this uh, first line that we did uh, then what we need to do is we need to say that in range dot remove and we need to remove the other dot transform uh, what we need to do afterwards is we need to check if in range dot count if it's less or equals to zero if that's the case we need to say that the state needs to be equals to sliding door state dot close so this is all we need to do so what we can do now is we can start animating this door so let's implement a brand new function which we can call something like start while animating inside of this method the first thing that we need to do is we need to check if enuminator uh, start animating is not equals to null if that's the case we need to stop the quarantine and the quarantine that we need to stop is going to be of course this start animating quarantine what we need to do afterwards is we need to uh, cache in the quarantine into this enuminator variable so let's simply say enuminator dot start uh, animating thing is going to be equals to uh, begin and this is the enuminator that we are going to uh, implement and what we need to do afterwards is we need to say uh, start quarantine and we need to pass in this enuminator all right so let's implement this begin quarantine so let's generate a brand new method and uh, the first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to create a while loop uh, which will check if currently we are animating if that's the case we need to yield a return null it means that we are going to yield and we are going to wait until this door is no longer uh, animating when the door is finished animating and we need to say that uh, if enuminator which is animate is not equals to null if that's the case we of course need to uh, stop the quarantine which is going to be enuminator uh, animate uh, then what we need to do is we need to say that this enuminator animate 
is going to be equals to the animate and uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to of course start the current tune and we are going to pass in this enuminator so now let's implement this uh, enuminator method which is going to be called animate so private enuminator uh, animate and uh, and this quarantine will require a new argument which is going to be the float and uh, let's call this something like x position so we need to know what kind of x position these doors needs to animate to so we will determine this by saying if the state is equals to sliding door uh, state dot open if that's the case then uh, the x position is going to be the open x position if that's not the case then the position is going to be uh, the close x position and that's all we need to do so now let's uh, start implementing all of the things inside of the animate enuminator so the first thing that we need to check is we need to check the approximate x position of this uh, door uh, so to do that we need to implement a brand new method uh, but what i want to do is i want to create a brand new c sharp class which is a brand new c sharp script uh, which we can call something like utility so inside of this class the first thing that i want to do is i want to remove derive from model behavior because this class is not going to derive from anything let's remove these methods and uh, the only thing that i want to do inside of this uh, class is i want to create a brand new public a static uh, boolean uh, which we can call something like approximately and uh, the arguments that we need is going to be the uh, the float which is going to be a and the float which is going to be b so we are going to check if the a is approximately the same as the b value and what we are also going to have is we're going to send another float which is going to be the uh, the threshold so this is why we need to create a brand new custom uh, approximately method because math dot approximately it uh, checks if well if a is approximately uh, the same as uh, b but we cannot put the threshold value we kind of need to do that so that's why we need to uh, implement uh, this brand new custom method we need to simply say return a math dot abc so let's say if a minus b is less or equals to a threshold that means that uh, a is approximately the same as uh, the b value so this is as simple as that we can go back to the animated method and we can say if utility dot approximately and we need to check if a uh, left door dot transform dot position dot x is approximately the same as x position that we send in uh, as an argument and uh, the threshold that we need to send is going to be uh, a really small which is going to be something like 0 0.001 value uh, which is going to be a really small uh, threshold uh, but if that's the case if these values are approximately the same we are going to simply yield and we are going to break which is pretty much the same as saying a return in a normal method so this is simply going to uh, return from this enuminator but if that's not the case uh, what we are going to do is we are going to say that the animating state is going to be equals to the state which is the current state uh, what we need to do afterwards is we need to say that yield a return a new wait for seconds we need to pass in the delay and uh, and what we're going to do afterwards is we're going to check if enuminator dot open door if it's not equals to null we are going to stop uh, this quarantine and uh, what we're going to do afterwards is we need to implement a brand new enuminator which is going to be called for example a uh, move and for the argument we need to specify uh, the float which is going to be x position so let's say animating equals to true because we are currently uh, going to animate this door uh, what we need to do afterwards is implement uh, the while loop uh, which is going to check if utility dot approximately so we are going to check if the x position is approximately uh, not the same if that's the case we are going to keep uh, animating until we reach that uh, threshold so what we need to send inside of this method is we need to say if uh, left door dot position dot x is approximately the same as 
at the X position that we need to move both of these stores to. If they are not approximately the same, we are gonna keep uh, animating. And the threshold is going to be, uh, well, the same is going to be 0 0.001. So what we need to do is we need to create a brand new uh, float, which is going to be called something like new X position. And the new X position is going to be a left door dot position dot X. So what we need to do then is we need to say that the new X position is going to be equals uh, to math dot lerp. And we need to lerp, uh, we, well, first of all, the A is going to be a new X position and B is going to be equals uh, to X position. And uh, the, the time, which is going to be the speed, is going to be the speed multiplied by time dot delta time. So what we are going to do is we are going to say that uh, uh, the left door dot position is going to be equals to a new vector uh, to a new vector. Uh, so uh, the x position is going to be, of course, uh, the new x position and uh, the y and the z values are going to be the left door dot position dot uh, y as well as left door dot position dot uh, z and uh, we are also need to do exactly the same thing uh, for our right door so let's simply say right door dot position is going to be equals to a new vector so the x position is going to be minus new x position and uh, and of course the y and z positions are going to be the default uh, right door of y and z positions and uh, the very last thing is of course we need to yield and return a null so simply wait for a, a single frame and after we are done animating uh, we are going to say that animating is going to be equals to a false all right and this is all we need to do uh, so let's go back to the animate method and uh, let's say that the uh, open door enumerator is going to be equals to the move enumerator and uh, the x position is going to be well of course the x position and uh, the very last thing is of course starting this quarantine so let's simply say start quarantine and let's start the enumerator open door quarantine uh, what we need to do then is we need to play uh, the sound effect because we are also going to play uh, the sound whenever the door is going to open or close so let's implement this play sound uh, method uh, let's simply say that this method will require the audio clip and this is going to be the clip so within this method uh, what we need to do is we need to say that the source dot clip is going to be equals to a clip and then we simply need to start playing the uh, sound effect so simply say a source dot play and of course as an argument we need to send uh, the clip and the clip is simply going to be so let's simply say if the state is equals to a sliding door uh, state dot open if that's the case uh, then we're going to play the open sound effect and if that's not the case we are going to play uh, the close door sound effect and the very last thing that we need to do we need to create a brand new while loop and we need to say while animating simply yield return uh, null and uh, i am pretty sure that this is all we need to do uh, with this uh, simple script so let's simply go back to unity and it doesn't appear that we have any uh, errors so that is uh, promising so let's simply go uh, to this door uh, so i already uh, set up this uh, simple sliding door as you can see so it's a simple model which uh, has the left and the right door it also has this trigger and uh, what you're going to do is we are going to drag and drop this uh, sliding door component onto this trigger uh, game object and uh, what we need to do uh, well first of all we need to reference the right and the left doors then the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure what layers this door needs to detect and uh, considering that these doors are inside of this trigger uh, these doors are going to be registered as objects in range which is of course uh, shouldn't be the case because this is a door it shouldn't detect itself uh, so because of that 
I changed the layer to be as transparent layer. So let's simply say that the layer that we want to detect is uh, going to be a brand new layer. And this layer is going to be, for example, a layer uh, to detect. So for example, of course, again, this is completely just for testing purposes. Uh, so you can, of course, configure all of these uh, settings accordingly to your project. And we are going to put all of the objects that needs to be detected by the door to be layered with this layer. So let's simply say that these objects are going to be layered with the layer to detect uh, layer, as well as this player. And uh, let's go back to the trigger which is the component, and uh, this door is going to uh, detect only this layer. So all of the objects that do not have this layer will simply be ignored. So this is all we need to do. So let's say that the speed is going to be something like 8, and delay is going to be, for example, 0.5. Uh, then we need to put the close and the open X positions. Uh, so again, uh, the left and the right door, as you can see, have the same position except that the right door is the negative uh, value so let's simply say that the close position is going to be uh, this value and uh, the open position is going to be equals for example to let's say something like something like this all right and this is all we need to do and i already prepared so i have a couple of uh, sound effects that you can also get if you're going to get all of the source files of this project. All of the links are going to be in the description down below if you want to, uh, well, get all of the files from this project. But uh, simply go ls reference this sliding door open sound effect as well as this sliding door close sound effect. And I am pretty sure that this is all we need to do. So let's jump into the play mode and let's see uh, if this entire thing is going to work properly. All right, so we are in play mode. So let's try to go near the door and let's see what is going to happen. All right, so it seems that we have some sort of an issue. And uh, of course, uh, the problem is that we need to uh, use the source getter instead of the source, which is the private variable, because the getter is going to do all of the checking before uh, returning the private variable. All right, so apparently we made a couple of issues within this sliding door script. Uh, so the first thing that I fixed was our on trigger exit. Whenever we are checking if in range dot count is equals to null, mean, meaning that all the objects left this trigger, if that's the case, we set the state to equals to uh, the closing state uh, but I forgot to start uh, animating this door so what we need to do is we simply need to set the state to be equals to the close state and then simply call a start animating method all right then the next thing that I modified well currently as you can see uh, instead of having the only one uh, illuminator which was illuminator open door what I did is I simply separated the left and the right door to have separate illuminators, a uh, right door as well as illuminator uh, left door. And then within uh, the animate method, I simply did a check, uh, checking if the right door uh, is not equals to null as well as the left door. If that's the case, I simply stopped uh, both of these quarantines. Uh, then uh, within the move method, uh, what I did is I simply just uh, included a brand new transform, which is, uh, well, the door transform. All right. Um, and this is all of these changes within the move method. And uh, within the animate method, what I did is I simply said that right and the left door illuminators are going to be equals to the move uh, illuminator. And uh, as an argument, the right door illuminator has the argument for the transform to be uh, the right the door and the position is the minus x position and for the left door it has the left door transform as well as the positive x position uh, value uh, so by fixing all of these uh, minor uh, issues uh, we can go back to unity and now if we try to play the game uh, everything should now work uh, perfectly as you can see, uh, the door opens and we, when we leave this uh, range, this trigger of this door, uh, the door closes, which is what we want. 
as you can see, the, the state is now open. Uh, let's try to change the speed to something like, for example, uh, 2. And uh, let's try to exit and then immediately enter. And as you can see, the animating state was uh, close till it was animating. Once it was done animating, the animating state equals to a new state, which is the current state. And then the simply the door opened. So just for testing purposes, what we can do, uh, let's try to, for example, uh, say that this uh, box is going to be inside of the trigger, which is also layered as the layer to detect layer. Uh, so let's try to, for example, exit with our player from this trigger. And as you can see, the door doesn't close until the very last object uh, leaves uh, this trigger. So once the box left the trigger, uh, the door automatically closed. All right, and this is all we need to do. All right, everything seems to work uh, perfectly. So we are done with this lesson. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you have any suggestions or what lessons you would like to see, uh, or for example, if you uh, have any issues with this lesson, maybe something you want to add or adjust or something like that, and you don't know how to do it, uh, then you can join the Discord server and you can uh, write in one of the help center channels. If you want to suggest a lesson, uh, there is a channel for, uh, well, suggesting the lesson that you would like to see. And uh, also, if you enjoy my videos and you would like to see more lessons in the future, I would really appreciate if you could support me on Patreon. Your support would help this channel to uh, sustain in the future. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And I'll see you very soon in the next lesson.